Hello, I'm Jessica Jewell, a sophomore here at East Carolina University, and I want you to join me on our continuing walking tour of the historic center of the ECU campus. Behind me is perhaps the most iconic view of main campus. This graceful fountain in the center of a circular drive is located in front of what we know today as the Wichard Building and Wright Auditorium. These two buildings were perhaps the most striking of 10 new dorm, classroom, and administration buildings that rose on main campus during a construction boom in the 1920s and early 30s. It was that era of rapid expansion that largely defined what the mall looks like today. East Carolina grew rapidly after its 1909 opening. Its original enrollment of 174 had more than doubled by 1920, but the campus still consisted of the same six buildings. Enrollment growth was expected to further accelerate after 1921, when the two-year East Carolina Teachers Training School would become the four-year East Carolina Teachers College. The campus was bursting at its seams. In 1920, the school hired New York landscape architect Lewis L. Miller, who had designed the layout of the original campus to help plan for the continuing enrollment growth. When he returned to campus, he wrote that he was surprised by how the campus had matured. He said that the scraggly site he had last seen in 1913 had been transformed into as handsome a piece of natural parkland as can be found. Miller's plan for a much larger campus was put in motion in 1922 when the state legislature gave East Carolina over a million dollars to expand. As Miller recommended, the school bought an adjoining track of land on the east side of the original campus, a move that almost doubled the size of campus. First came two new dormitories that rose on either side of Jarvis. Fleming Hall opened in 1923 and Cotton Hall opened in 1925. As you can see, these new buildings continued the Spanish tile. Fleming Hall was named for James Lawson Fleming, a state senator from Greenville who introduced the legislation creating ECTTS. Cotton Hall was named for Sally South Hall Cotton an early feminist who founded the NC Federation of Women's Clubs. Over on the new tract of land, the new library building opened in 1924. The school library had previously been housed in a few rooms of the original administration building. In 1959, the library building was named for pioneering newspaper editor David Julian Wichard, who owned and edited the Greenville Daily Reflector for many years. He wrote many editorials in favor of founding a teacher training academy in Greenville. Beside Wishard, Wright Auditorium opened in 1925. Notice the tile roof and arched portico, which complements the architecture in the original buildings. This was called the Social Religious Building. Daily chapel services were held here each morning. This is also where students attended gym classes and where dances and other entertainment events were held. Back then, Wright had a flat floor and balconies all around, which made for a comfortable setting for everything from graduation ceremonies to basketball games. It was dedicated to President Robert Wright after his death in 1934. We're walking east between Wichard and Wright onto what in the early 1920s was the new part of campus. Directly behind Wichard and Wright is where the school erected an apartment building for faculty in 1923. Back then, the faculty was mostly unmarried women who sometimes had problems finding suitable lodgings in town. The building was named Ragsdale Hall in honor of William Henry Ragsdale, a faculty member who also was superintendent of Pitt County Schools for many years. Now we're going to walk just a few steps over to what is now the Theater Arts Building, but back in the 1920s, it was called the Model School. From its earliest days, East Carolina trained school teachers. The school needed a place where these future teachers put into practice what they were learning. Local Greenville pupils came here and were taught by East Carolina students under the watchful eye of faculty. The sweeping arches of the building continue the architectural touches of the early campus buildings. In 1959, this building was renamed Wall Coates School in honor of two faculty members, Francis Wall and Dora Coates, who had taught in the practice school for 30 years. Later, this building was expanded with theater facilities and became the home of the drama department. It was renamed Messick Theater Arts Center in honor of school president John Messick after he retired in 1959. The tradition of the model school is still kept alive at Walcoats Elementary School, a Pitt County public school located further down 5th Street. Now let's walk back to where we started at the fountain. 
This is where we will see another of the historic campus buildings named after members of the original faculty. After it became a four-year school, the enrollment at East Carolina Teachers College grew rapidly in the late 1920s. The greatest need was for more classrooms. So in 1929, a new classroom building on the circle beside Wright. This was known as the Science Building. Years later, it was named for original faculty member Maria Graham, who taught science and math here from 1909 to 1945. The school next turned its attention to constructing an administration building. Until then, the president and other administrators had offices in Old Austin, and it was getting crowded. In 1930, a new administration building opened just a few steps from here. John B. Stillman was the school's treasurer from 1912 to 1935. His wife, Jonetta Webb Spillman, was his assistant for all those years. The administration building was named for John Spillman after his tragic death in an auto accident in 1936. Mrs. Spillman was an amazing woman. After her husband's death, she went on to become commissioner of the North Carolina Unemployment Compensation System and later was the first executive director of the North Carolina Mental Health Association. Now let's walk back to the mall and visit the Student Health Center. This building replaced the original infirmary. The same Spanish style that was used in many original campus buildings is seen in the new infirmary when it opened in 1930. And the location of the new infirmary building was important for a couple of reasons. It was built in a wooded area on the undeveloped south side of campus and further away from the cafeteria building. In addition to this practical reason, it also had an effect on the design of campus. Remember, the original campus buildings faced 5th Street, and here was nothing but woods behind those buildings. But after the new infirmary opened here, that wooded area became the school's backyard. Slowly, that backyard evolved into the mall, the beautiful lawn we walk around today. Now we're back at the fountain where we started. After the building boom in the 20s, the school decided in 1932 to erect something connecting the old and new parts of campus, something that would symbolize the past, the present, and the future. To do that, they built a road between the old and the new, the street we know today as Founders Drive. In the middle, they built a circular driveway, and in the middle of that driveway, they erected a graceful fountain. The form of the fountain has changed over the years. It was originally called Wright Fountain, presumably because it stood in front of that building, and most thought it honored the founding president. But in 1951, the trustees made clear that it was dedicated instead to longtime faculty member Martin L. Wright, who had served as chair of the Campus Beautification Committee for 15 years. He was the person responsible for many of the trees and shrubbery that we still enjoy today. When this new fountain was installed a few years ago, the name was changed to the Trustees Fountain. Now, please watch our third and final video. In it, we'll explain how East Carolina Teachers College became just East Carolina College, and we'll visit many of the other historic buildings around the mall.